you for that splendid introduction. I've got one question for you. Do you want to live your life actively or filled with regret? Seems like a really easy choice, doesn't it? We don't want the latter. We want the first, live actively. A bit easier said than done. What does that even mean? A lot of moments that go by make up our life. We think that the big moments really define who we are, and they do. The big moments truly define who we are. But I'm willing to proffer that the small moments is actually what helps define us. You see, the big moments are what we use as fuel to figure out what changes we need to make inside of our brains and our heads and how that spits out into our real life. The small moments are those opportunities where we get to express who we are, truly. Whoa, on the inside. Sometimes it could be as big as that sound. But when we get into moments, we don't feel that big, do we? Sometimes when we get into moments, we feel that big, but we leave a lot smaller. It's almost as if we have an opportunity to dial ourselves in, but we decide to just leave ourselves out. Why? Why do we sabotage ourselves? I'm here to talk to you about courage. I'm not here about talking, not here about, um, here talking about big courage. I'm not talking about running into the building and it's burning and you're going to save that child and run out unscathed. It might be your version, your life might involve those big moments. I'm talking about the small moments that we decide whether we bring how much to the table. Do we raise our hand in a meeting? Do we voice our opinion? Do we say that our voice is worthy and that we have something to contribute? I call this everyday courage. It's the courage that we deploy in everyday little moments. Courage is defined as the ability to do in the face of fear, the ability to do something that frightens oneself. So you see, fear isn't the enemy. Fear is just part of the process. Fear washes over us. You have to let it wash over you. And then, while it washes over every part of you, you then decide, what do I do? What's the next moment of my life going to look like? Because it has a profound effect on the rest of our lives. So I'm here to tell you about three truths to courage that I don't know if we fully are aware of every day, but my DNA have made me so hyper aware to it that I want to share it with you. Those three truths are this. There is the known. There is the unknown. There is the gap in between. That is fear. But the more interesting point, our actions have to outkick that coverage. Our actions have to be greater than that fear, than that difference between what we know and what we don't know. And then not just in those big moments. I remember back at Carnegie Mellon, I was studying, and my mother's mother passed away. Quickly, I just packed up my things, went, didn't even clear it with my professors. Ironically, I teach. <laughs> but I knew that there was something more important to life, more important to what was going on in my life at that, at that moment. Now, that's something big looking back. But in the moment, it doesn't seem like you just have these little moments, right? The moment that you get the call from your distressed mother, the moment that you're facing and looking at your calendar and your schedule and saying, well, I have classes for two weeks, or I have meetings for two weeks, or I have these obligations, or work, or this. You see, the big stuff is always made of the small stuff. Yet we let them actively fly by. I feel like I am super lucky for so many reasons. One of the reasons is that I can characterize my entire identity into four letters. A, B, 
CD. Um, we have, me and my wife have twin toddler girls, and we love singing the ABCD song. So I'm not going to break out in song. Um, ABCD stands for American Born Confused Daisy. I know, right? American Born Confused Daisy means that my parents were immigrants, and I'm a son of immigrants. And I was the first one born stateside. And what that means, there's a lot of decisions that I was hyper aware of making in every day of my life as a child. Like we're used to as adults deciding what we have to do every day and that it amounts to something. But as a child, I was already predisposed to thinking about my entire life that way. And yet, this is why I'm so lucky, I'm so fortunate. It was an opportunity every day to define myself in those actions. I was always so hyper aware of what my actions today means for tomorrow and the days to come. My parents raised me that way. I'm so lucky I have good parents. Both me and my brother are. It's not the big stuff. It's the little stuff. The big stuff is out of our control. I couldn't control the fact that I'm a son of immigrants, right? I had no control over that. I had no control over my parents getting lucky settling in Northern Virginia, where at that time, when I went to high school, Fairfax County was the second richest school education county, school county in the nation. And I went to public school. I got lucky. I hit the lotto. I hit the lotto. The big stuff's always out of our control. Now, being an ABCD, I had all these choices to decide on my culture you know, how much do I bring in? And I got really lucky because my parents already wanted to assimilate. They already wanted to conform in a way while retaining their identity. So the biggest question I had every day was how much do I conform? How much do I want to blend in? How much do I stand out? It was amazing the fact that I got to choose those moments. Now, what does that mean for my adult life? My career is all over the place. And it's because of being hyper aware as an ABCD, I was born to think about little moments as opportunities to just be unapologetically curious about anything in front of me. And I was, I still am, I think. But man, I really was when I was in my teens and 20s. Like I would just, like, I, I, I painted. I sold $2,000 worth of art in high school. <laughs> I, I, I made skateboard decks. I, I drew and sold skateboards in between my sophomore junior year of college. Like so, and then I also worked for a law firm like as an intern for two of those summers. I, it just, it's all over the place. I'm so lucky and I'm so fortunate. But the other thing from this I want you to unpack with this everyday courage with realizing that every moment amounts to something is that you're more aware of what it means for you in the future. And it gets a little easier when you hear someone say, nothing goes to waste. I think a lot of times we are crippled by this fear that we have to decide everything right now for our future in this very moment. But the reality is that our futures are always defined by a series of moments. Now, just to get a little meta, this is some of the bigger stuff to my life. These are the broader strokes of how I've been so blessed and fortunate. But what does that mean for us? Does that mean that I'm just perfect? <laughs> no. <laughs> no one's perfect. Right? The beauty is in the imperfection. So fast forward to my adult life. right? I have, I have to be hyper aware of every moment because it's so interesting. We have heuristics that just make us go autopilot wherever possible. We're programmed that way. Our brains are programmed that way. right? So how do you actively break it and then not second guess yourself? It's weird being an adult with free volition and, and money, uh, or enough money to be able to do things, right? Which takes me to my third thing, okay? I've talked about culture. How much do you dye yourself in? You have to figure out your identity. The second thing was career. Nothing goes to waste, nothing. The most straightforward careers are actually all over the place, right? The third thing is self-worth. You gotta cultivate a sense of self-worth. And that takes a lot of work and love for yourself and those around you. You got to find the ones that you love so they can reciprocate because they love you back. 
me and my wife welcomed twin daughters in 2020 at what we thought was the height of the pandemic. That was like before Delta and Omicron, right? Uh, my wife delivered two beautiful, healthy babies that needed no NICU time. We got to go home after 72 hours after her C-section, and they're just amazing. They're the whole world to us. And I remember prep, preparing for that moment as an expectant dad. I already knew that I was stretched out. I already knew that I committed, yes, to like everything in the community. And I would try to keep up with friends, and I would try to call my parents every day, and I would, like, all this pressure that I built up in myself. Because remember what I said earlier when I was a kid, I was hyper aware of all these moments, and I didn't let it be debilitating? Guess what? In my adult life, I let it be debilitating. But that was before I was an expected dad. And then I decided that there were greater things on the line. It refined me. I'm so thankful. I'm so lucky for so many reasons. So every day, I had to intentionally decide, what am I letting go? And when you do that, you're always putting it in context. You're reframing today's decisions for tomorrow's benefits. It's a muscle. You can develop it. I promise you. But the way to self-sabotage is by understanding or by having this irk, this irking feeling that you're not enough. You have to love yourself. Now, there have been some difficult times because, again, what did I say? I have twin toddler girls. <laughs> They're two and a half, right? And me and my wife work full time, and we try to do a whole lot. But it all works because we know what's on the line, right? I remember when I was still figuring out my career, and this was before I got married in 2017, I remember, does anyone remember the summer of... 2016, it was super hot in Tennessee. We had more 100 degree days over that summer than we want to remember, right? And I remember I really wanted a BMW. Like I really wanted a BMW, like I was in my 20s. Like, like I had this thing that, oh, I am successful. Like I want to have a nice car. That car kept breaking down like all the time. And over that summer with 100 degree days, I didn't have enough money to do to make any repairs or maintenance on it. Talk about a punch in the face of humility. I mean, it's just, man. I still remember to this day, I just remember hustling, trying to get where my next, like I didn't have a lot of money, and so I was just trying to, something didn't work out that spring, and I had to scramble to try to, I mean, and I'm a self-taught coder, so I was going to code my way into at least making websites for people and just try to make some cash that way over the summer. It was. It was a short, it was a, it was a weird spot in my life. That was when my startup wasn't working. It was really just about to fail. And that was before I jumped back into law. Like it was such a weird, awkward time for me. At that point, me and my wife were dating for seven years and I really wanted to propose. I didn't have enough money for an engagement ring. It was all this stuff together. And it coalesced into this climactic point where I'm driving to pick up like this $1,000 check with no AC, 103 degrees, with every window down <laughs> on the highway, thinking, my life is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> right? I need to fix this. Sometimes, even ABCDs need recalibration, right? We're not gifted with this fantastical ability to reframe every small context into the greater scheme of our lives. And if we are, we still have to work to keep it. Remember, there are three truths to courage. There's the known, the unknown, and the difference is fear. And you've got to outkick the coverage. You've got to cover that with your actions. We learn from the big stuff, but we get to deploy that action in the small moments. Take the big stuff. Take the stories in your lives. Appreciate them. Love yourself. Find your self-worth. And then figure out, in every little small moment, it seems grand. It seems almost dramatic. But our energy and happiness and self-worth come from these little moments how we live. So I encourage everyone to find those active moments. And let's really lean in and dial in on what's, what makes us us.
Thank you. Thank you.